This is KGW News at Sunrise. Coming up on Sunrise, Multnomah County closing its warming shelters despite below freezing temperatures overnight. We have a list of places you can go in other counties. Plus. It wasn't until the 747 actually went into service that we realized that it, it, it was going to be a, a, a game changer in the world. A flight engineer for the first Boeing 747 remembers how it felt to be a part of aviation history. Now, the last 747 ever is on its way to Everett, Washington. A look back at the impact of what they call the queen of the sky. Also this morning, we have a birthday to celebrate. This local woman turns 100 today, and as she hits the century mark, we're gonna hear from six of her siblings, all over 80 years wow. old themselves. They're gonna share how their dad saved their sister's life when she was first born back in 1923. Devin Haskins has this story for us at 515. I cannot wait wow. to see that. Way to start off a Tuesday morning. And thank you so much for joining us and waking up so early with us. We appreciate it. It's a chilly one. Yeah, um, that warming center story puzzles me. You guys have more on that coming up. We're mm -hmm. back in the low to mid 20s across the valley in most locations this morning. Take a look up in the Wells Fargo camera. Visibility is good. What you can't really tell from the camera view is we have high thin clouds up top. But those clouds did not thicken up enough to really Prohibit temperatures from dropping. 28 out at the airport is actually one of the warmer numbers. 27 in downtown, 25 Hillsboro, Tiger, Westland, 26, 21 out in Gresham. Wow. Now, we said First yesterday morning would end up being the coldest of the bunch, and that's going to stand true. These numbers are going to hold warmer in almost every location than what we saw on Monday, but still very, very cold out. And this will still end up being one of the coldest mornings that we will see this entire winter season. All right, 28 right now out at the airport. Colder in most spots, 38 at noon, 41 at 5 p.m. Forecasting light winds, a high of 43. Cloudiness spilling up top may or may not thicken at times today. We'll have your seven day forecast coming up shortly. All right, Rob, before we get into our top story this morning, we just want to give you an update on something that's happening right now. Just a few blocks from our station here at KGW, a live look from the Goose Hollow neighborhood. This is 13th and Columbia. Nearly 2,000 PGE customers are without power in that area right now. Power went out around 3.30 this morning, so about 90 minutes ago. The cause of this is still under investigation. Of course, we will keep you updated as we roll through the Sunrise Show this morning. Now to some of our other headlines on this Tuesday morning. The union representing Portland city workers will resume contract negotiations with the city today. The big issue here is pay, specifically a cap on cost of living increases. If those negotiations fail, 600 workers could strike this Thursday. The union includes employees who work in sewer and wastewater, transportation and parks and recreation. Last week, Mayor Ted Wheeler issued an emergency declaration that would allow Portland to use emergency money to hire replacement workers and reallocate city staff. Clackamas County deputies say the body of Kyle Kircham has been found near a campground in the Mount Hood National Forest. He disappeared back in November. Authorities found his car near Highway 224, but there was no sign of him. Well, two days ago, his relatives were out searching and discovered a piece of his clothing. They later found his remains. No word yet how he died. Also this morning. To those who knew Mike knew that he was a very um, humble man uh, who uh, expected the highest out of himself and of others and that he would that former co-worker is talking about Mike Schrunk, Multnomah County's longest serving district attorney who died yesterday. Schrunk led the DA's office for more than 30 years from 1981 to 2012. He was best known for launching one of the country's first drug courts to help defendants get treatment instead of prison time. Mike Schrunk was 80 years old. And those are some of your Tuesday morning headlines. With temperatures once again dipping below freezing last night, Multnomah County kept warming shelters closed. Officials use a few different metrics to decide when that happens. In this case, city and county leaders say it's dry and they didn't think forecasted temperatures would dip to 25 or below. Although in the area, those temps did get to that uh, threshold. Though, of course, 
it's still cold out there. People looking for a place to stay warm overnight for sure. More than 80% of the available beds in warming shelters in the county were filled overnight Sunday. Meanwhile, Washington and Clackamas counties did open warming shelters for people needing a place to go. And we know that this is a life saving service for people experiencing homelessness to have somewhere to get inside and get warm and have a, you know, a, a hot meal. And so we are keeping our shelters open overnight. So here is a full list of what's open in Washington and Clackamas counties. We've got information about Clark County on our website, KGW.com. Of course, lower temperatures also mean higher heating bills and not only are we running our furnaces more these days, gas and electric companies are also charging us more. As our sister station in Seattle reports, the impact of rising energy costs is being felt throughout the Northwest. And you can see it's at 68 here. John Owen sets his thermostat to 68 degrees, not a degree more because he has no other choice. If I turn it up any more, you know, I'm not going to be able to afford to pay the bill. John and his wife live on a fixed income of just $1,000 a month. When they go to bed, they turn the heat off and bundle up with jackets and blankets to save money. When it gets cold, it gets cold in there, and the, and the temperature changes rapidly in there. John says his heat bill nearly doubled this month to $140. He's never seen it so high, forcing him to make some decisions he shouldn't have to. I have to make a choice. Am I going to eat or am I going to pay my, my, rent, my rent and my utilities? Puget Sound energy rates jumped by nearly 9% this year, while natural gas costs skyrocketed 23%. An early and exceptionally cold winter is giving people sticker shock when they go to pay their bills. The war in Ukraine, along with less natural gas production and increased demand, are driving prices higher. They keep raising the prices. How are we going to afford this? You know, I don't know where it's going to end. It has all the numbers where people can call. This winter is creating a perfect storm of sorts for agencies like the Opportunity Council, which helps people struggling with utility bills. COVID relief money to help people pay their bills is running out with the need for assistance higher than ever. We do our best to just get really creative, but it is hard on your heart. Um, and it is concerning when you know people are really struggling. Oh, they're, they're delicious, believe me. For now, John Owen keeps warm with a pot of beans, hoping for an early spring and brighter days ahead. We're grateful for what we have. Again, that was Eric Wilkinson reporting from Seattle for us. And it's also worth noting, even with the rise in rates here in Washington and Oregon, we still have some of the lowest energy costs in the entire country, less than half of what people in New York and California pay. The press called it jumbo. They called her jumbo. They've called her wide body. Boeing called her the super jet. The Boeing 747-8 airplane, also known as the Queen of the Sky, changed the world's perspective on travel. Today, the last 747 will be delivered to Atlas Air in Everett, Washington, where it'll take off for the last time on Wednesday. But let's head back more than 50 years ago when the first 747 flight took off out of Western Washington. It took 50,000 people to design and build it. And Thomas Gray is one of the people who worked on it. Today, he guides tours of the plane, but back in 1969, he was on one of the first test flights. In fact, there's a patch on his jacket saying so. Thousands of men and women that actually spent their heart and soul in conceiving and, and building this airplane. Would you say that you put your heart and soul into it as well? Uh, I'd, I'd like to think so. I'd like to think so. It just captured the world's imagination. And that was the source of that was right here, right here in our area. So not only did this jet make it economically feasible for the average person to fly, but they could go anywhere in the world. It also put Western Washington on the map as an aviation powerhouse. In total, more than 1,500 747s were made. Who could use a vacation right about now? I could. Okay, Brenda Braxton, we're going to put you in Aruba this morning. <laughs> Ooh, uh, we can Aruba. put you there. <laughs> I'll go with Brenda to Aruba. <laughs> well, wait a minute. I think she should be inviting you, Rod. I don't know if you should be inviting yourself. Come on along. Oh, you're in, Rod. Uh, we can take you to Aruba because we have Earth Cam this morning Beautiful. taking us to Aruba. 
So here's the deal. Today is actually Ooh. known as National Plan Your Vacation Day. Uh, one of the reasons we have this day is so people don't forget to use all their PTO over oh, the course of the year. Don't man. wait till December. <laughs> it happens. It happens in our it station does. all the time, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as part of the day, we're asking you, what is your dream vacation spot? If you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go? Hazeldell. <laughs> <laughs> hey, okay, Rod. <laughs> I started to laugh, then I realized, you know what? Hazeldell is beautiful. Why not? Ron did not say Hazeldell, though. Uh, viewer Ron said this week he would go any place that is warm, mm. and Hazeldell is not warm this week. <laughs> uh, Terry wrote, how about Scotland or maybe Greece? Oh, Greece, yeah. And then I believe, I don't know if we're going to see these comments, but I promise you they exist. Bobby said she uh, would keep it short and said, just Italy. Sure. Oh, yeah, lots of good food. Oh, here they come. Now they're pouring in. <laughs> there's Ron's comment. Yes. Next. He's flipping through. There's Terry's Scotland comment. Greece. Yes. Oh. Now what do we got? Italy. Recap. There's the Italy. Yes. And now we've got Jimmy. Yes. Jimmy says he wants to go to either Japan <laughs> or oh, South Korea. Oh, my gosh. Yes, great choices. All right. Plan your vacation day. Brent, it has, does happen, especially with some of our younger employees. I always ask them, how many days off do you get each year? And a lot of times they'll say, I don't know. You have to change that. Find out how many days off you get. You know what? I gotta say, it's not just the younger ones. You helped me out last year. I miscalculated my vacation 10 days. <gasps> I got 10. 10 extra days because of this. But you man. used I you was used disgusted them. by your lack of using <laughs> oh vacation. Gosh. Why aren't you taking more time off, Brenda? Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Mm -hmm. Rod, let's talk about the weather. The <laughs> cold like part of our uh, finder's <laughs> fee, Drew, that she should pay you. That's a lot of <laughs> cash left on the table. <laughs> all right, we have uh, clouds spilling in right here. So overnight, high clouds were thin. So thin that it didn't really impact anything. Temperatures have fallen off back into the mid 20s on average, but it looks like there are some thicker clouds offshore. So maybe we do cloud up at some point today. Weather models vary on how thick those clouds will be. There's no precipitation in them. They're going to be fairly well mid to high level clouds when they come in. Uh, it's another cold morning. Uh, not, I mean, by the number of degrees, technically not as cold as yesterday, but you may not notice the difference. 27 right now in downtown, 26 in Westland, 23 out in Sherwood. We had a few spots dip into the teens. Remember yesterday morning and PDX got down to 21 yesterday. There's Salem at 25 currently. So the, we're still dealing with the cold temperatures being the number one weather story. Burns is at zero, uh, Bend 18. It is freezing over the coast this morning as well. The headlines I'm following, I'm saying today is the final very cold day for our climate. Tomorrow we start off freezing, but again, warmer than the numbers I just showed you. But we warm back up to 50 degrees tomorrow afternoon. That'll be back to normal. Uh, and then the next thing we're watching, showers returning Thursday night, Friday. Not a lot of rain, though. The models keep downgrading the rain potential here now down to two tenths. Saturday, it may or may not produce a shower. And then a rainy Sunday with snow levels at about 4,000 feet up in the mountains. So here we go. Our lonely low day. Then we pop up. And then we stay up. And then we have showers coming in Thursday night into Friday. And that is your seven day. All right. Thanks, Rod. Coming up after the break. A family of six uh, siblings talked with me about growing up and growing old together and the story of how their dad saved their half sister's life who celebrates her 100th birthday today. I'll have that story in just a couple minutes.